Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to my first kind of proper video in Dragon Ball Fighters. I don't really know if something like this will become a regular thing, as it is something quite new and different for the channel, but if you guys do like it and want to support it, leaving a comment and a like is always appreciated. Now let's actually get on to the video. Now if you guys have been keeping your eye on Dragon Ball Fighters, you'll all be aware that it's currently on the horizon, and we're roughly about two months away from its release. Now despite this, we still don't know too too much about the story. It is still extremely vague. So I'm making this video to kind of clear things up and for the most part a lot of this is speculation so please do take it with a grain of salt. And the Dragon Ball Fighter story is a what if story so it does exist outside of the main continuity. Now one thing we have to talk about here is where does it take place in the timeline and the characters that are involved as a large majority of the characters here are all from the Dragon Ball Z saga with a tiny sprinkle of Dragon Ball Super in here as Frieza has access to his golden form and Goku is able to utilize Super Saiyan Blue with Kai Ken times 10. So if I were to place it somewhere in the timeline, it'd be sometime after the Universe 6 and Universe 7 tournament kind of finishes. So the story is set in the Super timeline. But the one thing here that gets kind of crazy is the amount of Dragon Ball Z characters we actually have on the roster here, as a lot of them are dead, which then leads me to two different theories here. They've been brought back with the Dragon Balls, as we do see Android 21 summoning Paranga. At least that's what it kind of gives away in the trailer, but this could easily be someone else doing. It. Now the other option are in fact clothes. Now this wouldn't be a massive surprise as the story is very android based and when Dr. Jiro was still alive he collected DNA from various people in the Dragon Ball universe. So something along the lines of cloning isn't outside the realm of possibility here. But one thing that does kind of baffle me is the inclusion of teen Gohan. Because the time where I'm saying this is place, Gohan would be an adult and be married. So I believe teen Gohan has been put in here as part of a flashback which I just realized may possibly mean that we can get Mystic Gohan as a character. Now let's talk about the antagonists of this game. Now for the most part Android 16 and Android 21 are being kind of painted as the villain, except Android 16 here doesn't seem to entirely agree with Android 21's methods, as by the end of the Cell Saga he does seem to gain some form of humanity and learn the value of life before this happens. Now they have put a lot of emphasis on 16 here and how he'll play a very important role in the story, which then raises the question as to why and who brought him back. Well this is where Android 21 steps in here. Now 21 is a new addition to the Dragon Ball universe and a very mysterious individual. Now we don't know her relation to Android 16 or even Dr. Jiro, but many have speculated that it's either Dr. Jiro's wife or daughter, seeing as Android 16 is in fact modelled after Dr. Jiro's son, who did die whilst working for the Red Ribbon Army, so his resurrection by her would have some ground if this was the case. Now let's talk about Android 21 and the scheme that she does have at hand. Now this is very vague at best, but I'm going to put some ideas on the table of what I've personally been able to piece together from the stuff we have seen. Now it seems like Android 21 wants to carry on Dr. Jero's work, and seeing as we've been told that she's someone just as smart as him, she may be carrying on his work, or at least an idea of it. You see, for a long amount of time, Jero kind of became obsessed with Goku and how powerful he was. So he'd take his time to extract DNA from him as well as a bunch of other fighters to in fact create the ultimate being in his eyes, Cell. Of course he wasn't able to see the fruits of his labour as he was killed by 17 and 18. And since Cell was killed off, he clearly wasn't the perfect image and vision that Jero had set out to make. So this is where Android 21 steps in here. I personally believe that she's trying to outdo what Jero had set and has most likely modified herself to work like Cell, in a sense that she can consume fighters to amplify her own power. Since she does use the phrase, I wonder how tasty you will all be. Oh my god, I, I just realised how inappropriate that sounds out of context. But it seems like that will be her main motivation in the story for battling the Z fighters. Now a very important shot here is the inside of what we can presume is her lab. We see multiple different containers with larval forms of Cell. Now yes, this could mean multiple cells, but it's much better off to say that this is where her clone army is coming from. As we have seen quite a bit in the trailers, these greyed and blacked out versions of Goku, Cell and Vegeta, so this must be where her army is coming from. She's using the genetic material left by Jero as a format for her own personal army. So she's obviously using these to weaken down the Z fighters so she can absorb them after they've burnt out their energy. Now I do understand that there are three different like branching story arcs, but I believe this has mostly been done to pad out the story more and to fill up more story 
story for Android 21. The one interesting thing that I have certainly seen here is the reaction that Frieza has when he realizes that he's alive again. So I believe that either the heroes get extremely desperate and bring him back, or he is most likely a clone that has been given life by Android 21, who had possibly picked up a new sample of Frieza's DNA upon his resurrection. And something to clear up here is the absence of Dragon Ball Super characters. Well, story wise, I don't really have an argument for them not being in it, but I do feel like this has been done so that they can ship off the Dragon Ball Super characters in a DLC pack for us to purchase post release. Of course, we don't really know if the roster is complete right now, so we may just get a super character thrown in here, but as of right now, there are none, and it wouldn't surprise me if they were to be shipped off as DLC. But this does, for the most part, wrap up the video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this, and it's put some rather interesting ideas on the table for what we can see from the Dragon Ball Fighters story. I myself am personally very excited, as the first series that I ever got into as a child was Dragon Ball Z. So the series is very nostalgic and does hold a very special place in my heart. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on the Dragon Ball Fighters story. What do you think will happen and what do you think we can expect to see? And like I said at the very beginning, if you'd like to see more of these Dragon Ball Fighters videos and you really do like this kind of stuff, please give it a thumbs up because it lets me know what you guys would like to see. Now before this video wraps up guys, if possible let's try getting it to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel as YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So be giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. We also have a Patreon set up, so if you want to go the extra step and help out the channel, a link for it will be down in the description below. Anyway guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time.